So multiplicative processes tend to give us quantities that are distributed according to a log normal. But a small change in the nature of the process can lead to a quantity that's distributed not log normally, but according to a power law. So I want to um, give a very uh, qualitative sketch of how that might occur. The math is a bit more, uh, a good bit more, I think, than we want to get into in this course. But again, the um, review articles by Mitzenmacher in particular, and then also the book by Calderelli are good places to look further for information about this. All right, so as I've already said, if we have a multiplicative process, some random variable right, that arises from multiplying a bunch of other random variable numbers, uh, random variables together, we tend to get something that's log normally distributed. However, suppose that we impose some sort of a lower threshold to this quantity as it fluctuates. So that um, um, if we're maybe thinking about income or wealth or something, that um, the, the quantity can never actually, cannot get arbitrarily close to zero. So maybe there's some sort of minimum guaranteed income that everybody's going to get. Or maybe if we're thinking about cities, there's some lower um, cutoff size for the population of a city. Once we get below a 5,000 people or something, it's just not a city anymore. Um, so there's some lower cutoff in this process. Uh, then the distribution changes. And so if we put some lower threshold, so in, so in other words, we don't let this get arbitrarily close to zero, then that's enough to convert the distribution of xt from log normal into a power law. So let me write that statement down. So if we have some fixed lower threshold on xt's, then xt is distributed according to a power law. So again, the picture here is that there's some, if we're thinking about incomes, there's some minimum income that you can't fall below, or maybe there's some minimum size for a city. So um, the mathematics to justify this um, is a little bit involved, but let me just say a few words to maybe give a little bit of intuition. So for the regular multiplicative process, I kind of have this picture of um, some quantity that's bouncing around as we multiply. And I'm, my hand here, I'm imagining that that's at zero. And so it can bounce around. It might get very close to zero, right? If I have some losing investments, I lose 50% of this, 50% of this, 50% of this, and so on. Um, but then I might make some money back and so on. So anyway, so it's, it's bouncing around and um, it can get arbitrarily close to zero. And, right. So now, if I put this minimum threshold in, then it can't get arbitrarily close to zero. And I picture this as um, sort of providing a, uh, well, this barrier is something off of which this bouncing thing might reflect. So one would need to say more to specify the model for exactly how this threshold gets implicated, uh, gets um, uh, implemented. But the picture I have is that rather than just getting closer and closer and closer and closer to zero, it reaches some point and then it sort of bounces off of it. And so this threshold has the effect of pushing things off to the right. And that's going to give this a sort of even longer tail and make it be not, not a log normal distribution, but a power law. So again, this is not even remotely a mathematical proof of this statement. Um, but maybe, it, to me at least, it helps sort of think about why this is true, gives some justification for it. And you can read more um, about the details of this in the references that I provided. So um, I think this is an interesting result because this is a really a pretty small change in the basic setup, the basic picture. We have things multiplied together, and then, oh, if we just impose some threshold, we shift from one type of distribution to another, from log normals to power laws. So that tells me that log normals and power laws, as I said in the introduction of this um, 
segment are very closely related. Log normals and power laws both can result sort of generically from multiplicative processes, but a sort of small detail in the nature of that process can shift something from log normal to power law. Um, so uh, wrapping up to, um, as, you, as you can probably imagine, these sorts of multiplicative processes occur pretty frequently. Um, anytime you have growth that's proportional to your current size, right? When you're growing by a percent, you get 10% bigger, then 4% smaller, then 11% larger, and so on. Anytime you have growth that's on that sort of percent basis, and it's some sort of fluctuating random thing, you'd expect to see log normally distributed quantities or power law distributed quantities.